Have you ever faced the problem inside your daily workload in an organization where you're struggling to get the consumers of data the data they want and provide that layer of governance that is required? Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at Amazon Data Zone from AWS. This is the latest solution to that problem where we aim to marry producers of data with consumers of data. Data. It does this through four key features. The first is a data catalog where the producers of data can publish their data, known as data assets, to be searched and subscribed to by the consumers. The second is projects where individuals or structures within the organization, say for example, data engineers and data analysts, can form separate projects where they can publish and request access to data. The third feature is an innovative UI which puts in place the mechanisms that you need for the data catalog and the projects themselves. And the fourth is a governance layer where I as a consumer of data can ask by searching through the data catalog to have access to a particular data asset. The producer or owner of that data can then say yes or no based on why I need access to that and state a reason why they're granting access, providing that governance strategy required for all modern data architectures. With that being said, I've made all the resources for free that you need for this demo. So please join me on the console now and we'll get started. Okay, folks, that's me signed into the AWS console. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to Amazon Data Zone. And we do that by typing in Amazon space data zone and it'll come up. There's only three regions where Amazon Data Zone is available currently. Ireland is one of them, so I am going to personally operate out of there. As you can see, at the time of recording of this video, which is the second week in July 2023, Data Zone is still currently in preview. Production use is not supported. So it's for preview only, which is a great chance to get hands on before it becomes uh, a mainstay of the AWS suite of services. The first thing you want to do is create a domain by typing in uh, or clicking on the domain button and I'm just going to call this sales and we're going to follow a pretty descriptive um, AWS demo for this. Once we have the sales domain we can leave everything else as default for the purposes of this demo and hit create domain. This will take uh, a couple of minutes anywhere between one minute and four minutes so far for me I have heard reports of it taking up to 10 minutes for a domain so just bear with it while it creates in the background. You can see here that creation is pending you have the refresh button as normal so just keep refreshing until it is available and green. Okay, as you can see that the sales domain has now been created and it is available more importantly. Next thing we're going to do is click on the open data portal URL located on the right hand side, click it and it'll open in a new tab. And we have landed on the data catalog page as you can see. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a producer project. Just like I showed in the intro, this is what's going to produce the data. So this is our producer. We do this by going over to projects on the right hand side, clicking the plus button and giving it a name. So we'll call this sales hyphen producer so we're able to distinguish it from the consumer project. Select a domain, well we'll only have one domain that is sales. Select a domain, Let's give it a couple of seconds, we'll use the default project rule and we want to create the project. Once it bounces onto the other screen, you can see that there's about six minutes left until this is created. So I'm going to pause here and we'll come back once all these five steps have been completed successfully. Once the producer project has successfully created, it will automatically take you to the project screen, which will look like this. You can also see it on the left hand side here called sales producer. Due to the uh, default settings on the project, on the right hand side, you can see that it created an S3 bucket and two databases as well. It also created a Amazon Athena query um, access link for us here. So we're gonna click on that because we need to create some data as the producer. So when we're the producer here, think of this like the data scientist or data engineer type role. The role that is actually producing the data and naturally this is where we have to actually produce some data. If you need more information on Athena, I have a couple of videos on the channel, so please check those out. I won't go into in depth here, we're just going to use it. We need to be on the producer database because you can see that there is a producer sub and there is a producer pub. We want to be on the producer pub because we're naturally going to produce the data. So we want to produce data. To do this, if we go to the AWS documentation and the link is in the description below, I'm on step three. We're just going to copy this piece of code. You don't need to understand this code, just copy it. It's going to insert data and create a table for us at a high level. If we scroll down, you want to hit this run. It'll take a few seconds running and then it will finish in one second for me. That has created a table. 
If you look on the left hand side, you should see a table now called Catalog Sales. And this contains the data that you can see on screen here with things such as order number, quantity, wholesale cost, and list price. So that's just done inside the Athena um, window for now. If we jump back onto the portal, the next thing we need to do is actually publish some data. So on the right hand side here, you can see publish data. And what we're going to do is publish the table that we've just created using Athena into our data catalog and data zone. And then that means that other users can search for it um, when they want to find and use data. We're going to use the automatic um, or automated publish rather, give it a name. So I'm going to call this sales catalog because that's what it is. Sales hyphen catalog, it has to be one continuous name. Then we just want to give a quick description as well. So I'm going to say this is the sales data catalog publishing job. Okay, that's that done. We're publishing everything in sales. Everything else can stay. The database name we actually need. So if we go back into the query editor and we look on the right hand side, you can see that it is called sales producer underscore pub underscore DB. So you need to type that in. So sales producer pub underscore DB. So you can see sales producer underscore pub underscore DB include everything with this asterisk. We want to leave this as draft, so it means we can actually edit some of the business definitions in the catalog before we publish it. And we just want to run it once. Create the publishing job. It'll take a few seconds to pick that up. This is automatically running um, because we have it set up that way. It'll take a few minutes, so I will pause the video here and come back once this turns green. And of course, there's always the refresh button to keep refreshing as well. Once you hit the refresh a couple of times, you can see it took nearly three minutes for my job to run in total. We have one asset added to the catalog. That one asset is the table. It's not quite added to the catalog yet. It is still in that draft version. So what we need to go do is get that asset, give it a couple of descriptions with the business names, and then we'll publish it to the catalog where our consumers can come in and find it. To do that, we need to go to the project on the left-hand side. Okay, once here, we want to go to publishing. We should get that one data asset. We do the catalog sales table. As you can see here, it's still in draft and we want to click on the hyperlink. You can see when you land, you get the metadata about the tables. This is information in terms of the technical details of where the S3 or the glue data table lies within your account. What we want to look at is actually some of the business definitions. So if we go edit name and description, you can see that we can't change the technical name or the technical description, but we can change the business name. So for that purpose, I'm going to call this sales catalog. And for the description, I'm going to say, this is the sales catalog. And then we want to save the changes. And then let's have a little look at the schema. So you can click on the schema and you get information about the schema. And then we can start to edit some of these in terms of the business definition. So I'm gonna click this and you can see again, we can't change the technical name, but we can change the business name. So I'm gonna call this order number and we're gonna give this a description. This is the, that means we can search on these columns and keywords and we'll just pick one other one. So wholesale cost, which is the third one down, edit the name and we'll call this wholesale item cost cost and then here we'll say this is the and we want to save the changes next thing when we kind of give everything a business definition we want to then just set the asset to active that means that it can be found by other users inside our data zone product that's the asset now active the next thing we need to do is set up another project where we can actually act as the consumer. So we can go search the catalog and get access to the table and actually search it. So for this hat, once we create the new project, we're going to be wearing our data analyst hat. So the first thing we need to do is create a new project for this user to act from. We're going to call this sales consumer because they're going to consume the sales data. So sales consumer, we don't need a description. We've only got one domain, which is sales, select a domain, and create the project with the default profile. And again, you can see they're getting access to Athena, Glue Data Catalog, and S3. That's it off and creating. This will take about six minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video here and we can pick it up again once those six minutes have completed. Okay, that's the uh, sales consumer project created. And again, it takes you straight to where you need to be. Left hand side describes all your projects, but it takes you straight here. And as the consumer, the first thing we want to do is actually try and subscribe to the table that we just created as the producer. So just type in sales catalog, and this is us actually searching the data catalog. It'll go off and run. Oh, there it is, the sales catalog of any company that was created by me as the producer. Let's just ignore that for a little second. We want to subscribe, so hit the subscribe button. 
Select a project that we want to subscribe to, so it's going to be the consumer project, and request a reason for the subscription. I am the data analyst that needs access for the monthly sales report, and subscribe. That's the request now off to the owner of the table, which is our consumer, to say, hey, I want access. You can see that the access is pending, as in the subscription is pending. You can still view the request here, but as the consumer, you're now waiting on that producer or the owner of the table to tell you, yes, you can have access. So with that in mind, let's jump back to the producer on the left-hand side project. So if we then go to publishing, and then we go to subscription requests, so people who want to subscribe to our data, you can see that that request is sitting there. You can also see after a few seconds, you get a notification up on the top right-hand corner, but let's use this for now. View the request and it's saying, well, who wants access? And it's someone in the sales consumer um, with the admin of this. And it's saying, do you accept that they want it? It gives you the reason. I am the data analyst that needs access for the monthly sales report. Let's say I approve. Why do you approve? Um, then I want to approve. This will then allow the analyst access. So let's then jump back onto the consumer project. So let's jump back on and put on our data analyst hat now and say, I want to consume the data. What you'll notice when we get here is that actually we can't access the data yet. The grant is in progress. There's some plumbing in the background that needs to go on before we can physically access that data. You may need to refresh that page to make sure it becomes active. Um, just to refresh, you can see now that we have granted. If you click onto it, it tells you what table you can see inside the catalog. And of course, now as we have access as our data analysts, we can go to our own Athena area by clicking on the right hand side to go to Athena. We know that we've been granted access as a consumer. So you can see inside the publisher. So we have again our consumer hat on. So we're the data analysts. We have not published anything, but we have asked to subscribe to something. Look, there's the table we asked to subscribe to. If we right hand click and go preview table, so you don't have to write any code, it will bring up that table and we can now see the data that it contains within it. So we've got a data analyst hat on and we can start writing those monthly sales reports. That's everything from me in terms of the demo. So let's jump back onto the camera and we'll do a wrap up of what we've learned today. Okay, folks, that covers the main features of Amazon Data Zone. I hope you found this video useful. I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching.